Hi, good evening. Welcome to tonight's meeting. My name is Michael Guarino. I'm with the Capital Projects Section in the Fairfax County Department of Transportation. I will be giving the presentation tonight along with my colleague Nagin Asgarsade, who's also in the Capital Projects Section. Thank you for attending tonight. We will have a second meeting on Thursday, October 5th, this Thursday at noon, where, we, where we'll be giving the same presentation as tonight. Tonight, we're gonna to be focusing on active transportation project projects, a prioritization process we developed, as well as project selection and funding. So active transportation refers to pedestrians and bicycles, which you've probably heard, but it also includes other types of mobility like scooters, equestrians, so it's a more inclusive term. So we'll use that. Sometimes you'll uh, hear people talk about bike ped or bicycle pedestrian facilities as well, but it's all the same thing. Tonight we're going to be focusing on a prior prioritization process we've developed and are rolling Michael, out the results. Yes. Sorry, we lost your presentation. Yeah, I know. Oh, OK, just making sure. Yep. Yeah, so just for the intro part and I'll put it back on. Thank you, Lauren. So tonight we're going to be focusing on a prioritization process and we do have an online survey to get your feedback and comments on specific projects. But before we begin, I'd like to review some guidance so everyone can get the most out of this meeting. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and we will post it on YouTube um, and then it'll be linked to our project webpage. And I have details of how to get to the project webpage later in the presentation. Also, Microsoft Teams does offer a live captioning service. You can find that by clicking on the three dots and choosing to turn on live captions. You are welcome to submit questions using the chat function at any time. We will do our best to answer all the questions while also ensuring we get to all the participants. So that means if you have multiple questions, we may um, skip some of them, put them in the back of the queue so we can get to some other people's questions. Please note your submissions in the chat will become part of the public record for this meeting. If you are on the phone, please hold your questions till the end and we'll have instructions on how to ask questions at the conclusion of the presentation. We encourage you to take the online survey to give us your feedback and input to help us with the project prioritization process and selection. And we'll give you more information about that in a few minutes. All right, we'll go through the presentation now. All right, so first I'll start with a little bit of background. The Fairfax County Board of Supervisors is seeking approximately $100 million over a six year period for active transportation access and safety. The board has emphasized the importance of providing safe access for pedestrians and bicyclists, especially near schools, parks, activity centers, transit station areas, and revitalization areas. We expect the money to come in in batches and um, it's been coming in annually so far. The board also, also asked our department to develop a prioritization methodology, which, which we have done, and we have a list of projects now to consider for funding. And we are seeking the public input on that proposed list. A little bit over 30.2 million of the 100 million has already been allocated, and we have an additional 26.4 million that has become available this fall. Future funding is anticipated, which so far has been occurring on an annual basis. We're also leveraging grant opportunities where we can to get additional funds. Some of the major grants programs we've been seeking are the Safe Streets and Roads for All, the Transportation Alternatives Program, also known as TA Set Aside, and the Safe Routes to School program. There are also multiple other grant programs that we pursue. As I mentioned, over 30.2 million has already been allocated. 9.45 of that has gone towards 30 lower cost crosswalk projects. These projects are hopefully simpler to implement and we've been uh, have had ongoing coordination with the Virginia D Department of Transportation or VDOT to expedite these projects. And VDOT is actually implementing four of the projects for us. And then just under 15.7 million went for 18 other priority projects. 2.8 million went for active transportation infrastructure maintenance. 
$100,000 went to the Fairfax County Police Department for speed feedback signs. And then other parts of the money have gone for local cash match for project grants, additional funding from ex for some existing projects, consultant support, and contingency. As I mentioned, we have an online survey. This is the result of our prioritization process and we're seeking public input. This will help us finalize our prioritization of our overall list of candidate projects and also assist in selection of projects to be funded now with the money that is available. Please note that projects not selected can be considered for future funding. I'll walk through quickly the steps of our prioritization process now, and then we'll go through and explain the steps in a little more detail. Our first step was a need and demand analysis that we completed. This was applied to over 2,800 unfunded projects and projects request. After that, we did some additional board and stakeholder coordination. And the idea here is to add in projects that weren't captured by step one of our process. Step three is a prioritization review that we completed this last month. And here our goal is to create a short list based on network connectivity and trip destinations. And then that takes us to where we are tonight, starting our public outreach and with us launching our survey to get public input. And then finally, there's step four, which is evaluation and selection. And we'll have a final list to go to the board, which is anticipated late this year. So step one is our need and demand analysis. We compiled a list of previously identified network gaps, unfunded projects and project requests. We mapped them in our GIS system, which is our geographic information system. And then we identified the highest scoring projects using a need analysis tool and a demand analysis tool. And then what we did for each of the nine magisterial districts, districts in the county, we created a list for each district with the highest need scoring projects and the highest demand scoring projects. The needs analysis tool basically identifies area with the highest need for access to safe active transportation facilities and also areas that are culturally less likely to request these types of improvements. And it looks at various factors to determine this need. And many of some of them are listed here. On the other hand, the demand analysis looks for areas with the highest density of pedestrian destinations to determine areas with the highest demand for active transportation facilities. And it looks at various factors and we have some of them listed here as well. After that, we went to step two, which was board and stakeholder coordination to add in projects that weren't captured by our step one analysis. And this is basically just a recognition that there could be and likely are important safety and priority projects that are outside the high need and high demand areas of the county. Next, I'll turn it over to Nagin, who will walk through our step three prioritization review in more detail. Nagin. Thank you, Michael. So in this step of the prioritization process, we conducted a detailed and thorough qualitative analysis and did a human check, rather than only relying on automated computer checks. Projects were assessed based on three criteria, proximity to pedestrian destinations, local connectivity, and regional trail connectivity. Projects are then rated based on each criterion. The rating scale includes categories such as high, medium, and low, and only projects with half a mile in length or less have advanced to this step due to available funding. The first criterion that was employed to assess the project is pedestrian destinations. We looked at destinations that are listed here to assess the candidate project. Rating for this criterion is based on how close the candidate project is and how many walking destinations are nearby. For example, if a project connects to a nearby destina pedestrian destination that is anticipated to have high activity levels, such as um, a mixed use center, this project gets a high in rating. The second criterion that was employed to evaluate the project is local connectivity. Our review was based on proximity to existing facilities. We checked to see if a candidate project connects missing gaps between existing facilities, and also how beneficial is the project to provide routes that connect pedestrian destinations. We factored in the presence of an alternative path 
for a facility in proximity of a candidate project and assess whether the candidate project offered a shorter travel distance compared to the existing facility. For example, if a project connects an existing facility to an identified pedestrian destination, the rating for this project would be high. And the last criterion that was used to assess the project is regional trail connectivity. To provide an example of a regional trail, um, we can think of the cross-county trail. We check to see whether a candidate project provides access to or completes part of a regional trail. For example, a high rating for regional trail connectivity means the candidate project connects multiple regional facilities. And next, we're going to use the results of step three to create a short list of projects for more detailed evaluation and selection, and also to inform funding decisions. Um, and with that, I'm turning, turning it back to Michael to go over the next step. Thank you, Nagin. So that takes us where we are tonight. And obviously, uh, this is an important stage to get public input before we go on to step four, which is our final evaluation and selection. So in this step, what we'll do is we'll review the public input we get, we'll refine our list as needed, and then develop a short list of projects that will go on for additional analysis. And then we'll take a little closer look at things like constructability, potential property and environmental impacts, and develop order of magnitude cost. And after this, we will present projects to the Board of Supervisors for approval as funding as funding becomes available. What that means in the near term, is we'll finalize our prioritization of the candidate projects and we'll take a list to the Board of Supervisors for endorsement, which we anticipate in December of this year. In addition, we'll present a list of projects to fund with the available 26.48 million that we have now and present that to the board for approval, which is anticipated in December. And then just a reminder that projects, if they are not selected now, it does not mean they will not be considered for funding in the future. And then we'll update, update and prepare recommendations for future projects as funds become available. And as I mentioned, that's been happening on an annual basis. So hopefully we'll have more money available next fall. So we have a project website with lots of information for you. I'll read the web page address for ADA accessibility. So our web page link is at www.fairfaxcounty.gov forward slash transportation, forward slash transportation, forward slash bike hyphen walk, forward slash one zero zero hyphen million hyphen funding, forward slash phase hyphen three. We also have a QR code there and I'll walk through um, how to get to our survey and we also have an interactive web map. On the front page, you can see the red box here on the image. That's where you can have quick links to take the surveys. Surveys are organized by district, so each of the magisterial district has a list of projects, and you can go through the one you live in, live near, or go through all of them if you want to. As I mentioned, we have an interactive map on our website. You can zoom in and out. You can click on projects and get a pop-up table that you see there with about five or six fields. In addition, there's a dynamic table at the bottom. And uh, I want to point out there's a map ID and you can find that map ID in the pop up table, the table at the bottom of the interactive map. The in the survey and all the additional data tables we have on the web page, so that map ID can um, let you correlate between all the various sources of information we have for the projects. In addition, we have an instructional video that's posted on the website that walks you through how to use the interactive map. So again, we really want your feedback. The survey lists all the projects and the results of our prioritization process. In addition to the quick links I pointed out earlier, each district has a tab. If you click on that district tab, you'll see a few links. One's a basic project list. One is a more detailed project table list that's got all of the projects and our step three prioritization uh, evaluation criteria and ratings. And then a link to the survey for that district. On the right of the page you see there is another link to the interactive map and, and the instructional video. In addition, we have a large data table that has all the projects 
combined together with additional data fields for those who really want to dig into the details and take a deep dive into the data. And also the definition of fields provides definitions of all the fields we have for it'll cover everything from the web map to all the tables we have. So that is a very good resource um, and explains in detail some of the data points and, and the columns and the fields. Once again, you can access the survey through our web page. The survey closes on October 16th. We have the QR code then there again for you. You can mail feedback to Fairfax County Department of Transportation. Attention Fairfax bike slash ped projects. That's 4050 Legato Road, Fairfax, Virginia 22033. To request reasonable accommodations, please call 703-877. 5600 or TTY 711. And again, this is all accessed through our project webpage, which is at www.fairfaxcounty.gov forward slash transportation forward slash transportation forward slash bike hyphen walk forward slash 100 hyphen million hyphen funding forward slash phase hyphen three. So that brings us to the question and answer part of the evening. So we'll now take questions and comments from attendees so that everyone can participate in this process. We ask that you type your questions into the session chat window. And we've highlighted how to do that here with these graphics. If you are joining us by phone and have a question, press star five to raise your hand and we will call on you. We have several people on the call to help answer questions. I will ask that panelists introduce themselves the first time they speak. Please note, we're trying to focus on comments about um, the process and how we got to where we are today. Um, project specific comments we'd like to get through the survey so we can compile them and then analyze the results. Okay, are you ready to answer some questions? I yeah. am. OK, great. Um, my name is Robin Geiger. I am uh, the Chief of Marketing and Communications for uh, the Fairfax County Department of Transportation. And thank you all for being here tonight. Um, we'll begin with Mr. Smith. Um, his, first, his question is, will selection include making sure that every supervisor district has projects? Yes. OK. Yes, we've organized the project list by district. Um, and we do anticipate that each magistrate or district will get projects. Okay, great. Um, David asks, the Board of Supervisors is seeking the money or have they allocated the money? Slide two says seeking. This is a hundred million over six years. So yes, they, they are seeking a hundred million over six years. Uh, it is both. They um, are still seeking it, but we do have some. So as I mentioned, 30.2 has been allocated. That came in in um, an amount of about 5 million and then a little bit over 25. And then now we've got that 24 point or 26.48 million available now. Hopefully next year in the fall, we'll get another batch. So we've got some, uh, a little bit over half the money, 50, 50 odd million. Um, but the, we're trying to get to the board's ultimate goal of the 100 million over the six year period. Okay, thanks, Michael. Um, Shelly asked that uh, the link under each project that says click to view results doesn't work, uh, that she can only see one result at a time. This is on the survey tool itself. Um, we'll have to check and see if we can change that on the survey tool so um, you can see the results. So we will check on that after this meeting. Thank you for your question, though. Appreciate it. Um, Tom asks, if we are considering only a half a mile or less projects, it appears that we would never consider establishing new bicycle networks, for example. The project list will always be, the bi be biased to small pedestrian projects. We managed to fund large capital road projects with batch funding, so why can't we consider a larger, longer, high-quality trail protected bike lane facility through this process. It seems like a gap in the process. 
Thank you for your comment. That is a good point. It's mostly due to the nature and the amount of funding and the time in which we're getting it. We have considered larger bicycle projects with other sources of funding, but unfortunately we haven't had any new available funding for some time, which is I think part of the impetus for the board to ask for this money, um, which is general fund money. And so the board's doing what it can to provide um, what money we can get for active transportation improvements. Basically, so like I said, we've made, we've gotten the, the money in a batch of 5 million, a little bit over 25, now it's a little bit over 26. A mile of a project these days is running us 12 million or more. Um, and so if we get 25 million at a time, if we're gonna do a mile and a half or two mile project, that's all the money potentially. Two mile projects, you only do two projects. So we've really been trying to focus on um, knocking out uh, we like a lot of those low cost crosswalk projects to get some safety improvements sooner versus later. Uh, and so that's the rationale behind that. As more money becomes available in the future, we'll look to um, we'll go back and look at those longer projects and uh, when we have more money available to fund some more expensive projects. Right. And um, then just real quick, Robin, if any panelist <laughs> has anything additional say to say, feel free to Jump in after oh, sure. I stop talking, and I'll ask you all if I, if, if I uh, want one of you to say anything. Does anyone have anything to add to that particular question? Okay. I, I, I'll add too, like that. We you know we do look at grant opportunities, and occasionally that can provide um, a source of money for a larger project. Thank you. Okay, um, Elizabeth asks if you're if you are doing the survey, can you just check yes for the ones you support and skip the other ones? Um, yes, you may do that. And thank you for that question. Yeah, so the survey asks if you support a project, yes, no, you can also leave it blank. And there is a comment, um, an open comment box at the end of each uh, district survey, so uh, you can leave um, fill in an answer as well at the end. Um, John asks, some projects have, have ready, uh, already been selected or will the entire 100 million be allocated via this process? Yes and no, perhaps. Um, I'll answer it that way. So the, the board has asked us, asked us to develop the prioritization methodology to aid in funding decisions. So I would think the vast majority of the $100 million is going to get funded through this process. However, it doesn't it doesn't necessarily mean that 100% of the money would get funded through this projects. There, um, with the 30.2 million, there have been some priority projects that have come up that um, we have funded. Um, and again, and again, like so, say next year, um, we'll reevaluate our list um, and then make uh, recommendations again to the board. Um, and then a lot can change in the year, so some new priorities may come up. So I think the idea is 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 yes, we would, but um, it doesn't mean that we're 100% locked into it either. Okay, thank you. Um, Allison asks, if a project is selected to move forward to the next round, when will FCDOT be able to elaborate on the full scope of the project? For example, in the Franconia district, there is very little information on what the projects will entail. I'm in favor of all pedestrian improvement. I would. I just would like to know what that includes, particularly projects 135 and 136 in the Franconia district. Okay. Yeah, thank you. And, and again, I, I'm not I'm not immediately familiar with the two projects offhand, but I'm glad you brought that up. And we do have a um anyway, I'm glad you brought that up. So the projects may ask for a walkway, sidewalk may ask for a trail or bicycle facility, say from point A, from point B. Um, but before we actually fund the project, we will go through and evaluate the scope to basically make sure that the appropriate bicycle and pedestrian facilities uh, are are included as part of the scope. For example, that could be a sidewalk and an on-road bike lane, or maybe a shared use path that could accommodate bicyclists and pedestrians. There could already be a bike lane out there, so we would just potentially need a sidewalk. Um, and we'd look at what the comprehensive plan calls for, and then what the future bicycle and pedestrian needs are. This has been a major data effort. We, like I said, we started with over 2,800 project requests, so we we haven't gone through and made those determinations. It does take a little bit of work and research. And then, 
sometimes even during design, we will look to see based on field constraints or property constraints, we might make some modifications. So uh, I would say, you know, we'll, what our intent is to provide the appropriate bicycle and pedestrian facilities um, at, on each of the projects. So if it says sidewalk, we'll make sure we have appropriate bicycle facilities there as well. And then, you know, could I'll just throw out another example, even like a lower volume, low traffic road, it might be appropriate to ride the bicycle on the road. These being more like your residential streets, for example. And if anyone else wants to jump in on that one, please go ahead. I'll add to that, Michael. My name is Lauren Delmar, Active Transportation Section Chief with Fairfax County DOT. And uh, similarly, the same thing goes for crosswalk improvements. We have not thoroughly evaluated every location where we might have been asked to consider a crosswalk improvement. So I think the specific locations you're talking about are crosswalk locations. So we will go back through, uh, in that case, uh, likely prior to funding to determine what the scope is in order to determine a funding amount for crosswalk improvements, since that tends to vary. Uh, so I hope that answers for that end of the types of projects. Thank you, Lauren. Um, OK, Diane says this is great information. Will the slideshow be available on the Internet as well? Yes, both this presentation and the uh, the recording of this meeting will be posted on our the web page that we've mentioned. Um, and the recording will take a couple of days, possibly late tomorrow, but um, but the presentation will be up tomorrow. Um, do we obtain do you obtain pedestrian and vehicular incidents from VDOT when determining the need score? So the oh, Megan, do you want to answer? I can answer this. Yes. Sure. So one of the um one of the attributes that we looked at is actually the safety corridor. Um it's called um pedestrian safety action plan or PSA. Um, which was initiated in early 2018. Um, so the, the report identified location with history of pedestrian and bicycle crashes along, along um, with proactively ad addressing uh, pedestrian bicycle crash risk. Um, um, so this was one of the main factors that we took into consideration when we, when we were de developing the rating for the project. Thank you, Nagin. And I'll just point out for clarification too that the need score does not look at safety necessarily. So it's one of the reasons we did have that um, the safety, um, whether it's in one of the safety corridors. Those are um, defined corridors. So just because the project's not on that corridor doesn't mean it's not a safety improvement. But the need score is really focusing on sort of areas of concentration where people have they're likely to have the greatest need for. Uh, access to transit or need for active transportation facilities, or again, um, areas that are culturally less likely to request such facilities and might be underrepresented underrepresented in our past allocation of projects. Okay. Thank you both. Um, Allison asks, similarly to my last question, if a project is selected to move forward, is it possible the scope of the project could be extended? For example, let's see. Uh, for example, um, the, to include funding the construction of sidewalk gaps. I would say yes. Yeah. So when we get the final scoping, and Lauren can chime in, we'll look to see like where it's logical to uh, end the project. It may not be exactly where that project requests or the current limits are, and there might be a gap. There might be a block of sidewalk and then another gap a block away. So we will look at that when we do the scope to see what makes sense. And Lauren, if you want to add to that. In all of our scoping processes, we check to make sure that we're not missing something that's a natural connection that's close by. So that might include a crosswalk connection that wasn't originally scoped or an additional sidewalk piece. So we will look to make sure that we're not missing something very close to the project that's being funded that would significantly increase the benefit of that project. Thank you. And if there's a project you support and you're aware of such a missing connection, please put that in the comment box when you take the survey. That'll help us out. Okay. OK, Alexis asks, um, this is about a kind of a specific project on a border. For map ID 158, it's listed on Mount Vernon's districts list. 
but the road is on the border of Mount Vernon and Franconia districts. It's a sidewalk widening project. Is the sidewalk project proposed for only one side of North Kings Highway or both? We might have to circle I, back to that. We'll have to circle <laughs> to back to that. Uh, yeah, like we'd have to dig into the details of that. Uh, you know, we would also look at that when we do the scoping. Uh, it's potentially um, if a request is for a certain side of the street. Let's say there's major utility poles and not a lot of room on that one side of the street. We might consider going to the other side of the street um, if that makes sense. Um, so that is something that's possible as well. But we'll have to circle back to that and double check that. Thank you. OK, uh, David asked, what are the supervisors seeking money from? In other words, do they not have power over the budget? They do have power over the budget, um, so they are this money is coming from the county's general fund budget, which uh, there's lots of other competing things for the county's general fund budget. Uh, so and I'm not a budget expert, but this is the most significant amount of general fund money we've had for these type of improvements in in many, many, many years. We do have a lot of other transportation sources for funding between grants. There's a county commercial and industrial tax. We do occasionally do uh, transportation bonds as well. Um, and so there's lots of other funding sources. Back in 2014, there was some changes to state law that uh, created an influx of revenue for us, and we did have a lot of money to allocate the projects at that time. Uh, but again, as I mentioned, a lot of these sources, um, we haven't had new money to allocate to a new projects in some time, and that's why the board has made it a priority and uh, portioned some of the general fund money from the county budget. All right, anyone else have any comment on that? Can I just circle back to sure. the question about map Great. ID 158? It did not mention it does not mention a side of street. So in the case where there is no side of street mentioned, typically we will evaluate both sides of the street. But some cases there's a gap on one side, but not the other side, or the gap is shorter on one side, in which case we typically will mention the side of street that we're referring to. So in the case of 158, it could be either side. So yes, it's technically on the border and probably should be in both districts. But again, with the data that we had, that we were working with, um, sometimes those things slipped through the cracks and missed the the being on both districts. So thank you for drawing that to our attention. Yep. And I encourage you all to uh, look at the map because that'll help you as well. Um, and when you click on the actual line or spot um, dot on the map, that'll give you the basic product project data, which including the district, so you know which uh, survey length that project is in. And again, yeah, thank you for pointing that out to us. OK, um, Cheryl says the survey allows participants to vote against projects. How will FCDOT ensure that voters are not simply voting against projects to protect their own interests? And why wasn't there a, a NA option? I'll, uh, I can answer the first uh, or the second part of that question um, or statement. The um, because you don't you're not required to answer the questions. I mean, you can leave it blank. So in essence, that is the NA option. Um, and we are we put the survey out there, uh, you know, for people to to vote. Um, and so we can't guarantee we're not ensuring or guaranteeing, you know, what people are, how people are voting. This is an open forum, an open survey. So um, that's that's how this survey was was structured. Anybody Thank you, else? Robin. Yeah, and I'll just add it's not voting in the sense of we're going to take projects with the most supports and automatically move those through. So what we're looking for, are there projects with uh, with support? Are there projects where there's a lot of not non-answers, maybe somewhat neutral? Are there projects where there seems to be um, some opposition? Um, and that will be factored into final decisions and final recommendations for the ultimate list that goes to the board uh, this this fall at the end of the year or in in future future years, but it, it's so it's designed to get input. Um, see which projects again have some support, a lot of support, some opposition, a lot of opposition or relatively neutral, but it's not a voting process in the sense that we're going to count 
count likes and advanced projects with the most likes. For OK, thank you, Michael. Um, OK, from SP um, says, I would like to see some sort of raised crosswalk at Farmington and North Kings Highway. There's already a crosswalk and a pedestrian crossing sign there. But of course, no cars will stop for pedestrians there. Raising the crosswalk at least forces them to slow down. Thank you. It would do us a huge favor. Um, we have this meeting recorded so we can document this, but it would be um, very beneficial to us if you could enter that into the comments of the survey, because we'll be using the survey as our tool for to compile all the public input, and we can then have that in one central place that'll help us with one, our overall analysis of the public input we're getting on our project list, but also compile uh, requests for additional projects that we can consider in the future. Okay, Diane asks if will the survey ask us if we have additional information for a project. For example, uh, number one forty three is in a walk to school community and is vital for the safety of the children. Um, the additional information on the survey is located at the end of each district survey. There's an open comment box, so you would actually just put that information, put your map ID if you want to, you know, clarify that's what you're talking about in that open box at the end of each each uh, district survey. All right, uh, Mike asks, does MAP ID 136 pedestrian improvements at Ninian Avenue and Janeway include filling the sidewalk gap from 5917 Janeway and 5005 Ninian Court? I know that intersection is only a two-way stop and has only one crosswalk. I'm also aware both property owners are willing to grant land to fill the sidewalk gap between Janeway and Ninian Avenue. I don't know offhand. Oh. we have to look at it again. I encourage all of you all to put these comments in the comments uh, when you do the survey. That will be tremendously helpful to us. We're not able to really get into details and answer a lot of specific uh, questions on our over 300 project list that we have rolled out in the survey. Okay, Howard asks, does FCDOT plan to ask for a bond issue in the future? If not, why not? So I am, I do not know uh, when our next bond will be. I know the county looks at um, other bond needs and uh, does a lot of work to ensure our AAA bond rating. I do not know when that next bond will be. I'm fairly confident the county does plan to do a transportation bond at some point, but I haven't heard when that might be. Um, and so I just, I don't have any other information beyond that. Okay. But that is a source of money. I'm sorry, Robin, that, that's mm -hmm. something we're always looking at. Um, and when it's the right time, uh, we will certainly move forward with it. Okay, um, Cheryl says, how did you factor into this process the outcomes from the active transportation working groups that met over the past several years? So the uh, that's referring to our active Fairfax transportation plan update, which is uh, doing a lot of great things, including looking at um, kind of revamping our comprehensive plan language, developing a lot of design, and planning tools for active transportation facilities, among many other things. Uh, that process is uh, the process that developed the need analysis tool and the demand analysis tool. That and that public outreach effort had a um, online uh, gap survey. Nicole, what was the official name of that? It was um, a, a barrier, a, a map basically where people could uh, add barriers uh, to walking and biking in the neighborhoods or other locations, but also destinations that they would like to get to. So that provided a lot of valuable information of where some of these gaps were. And this is Nicole Wine, and she works in our active transportation section, and, and she's managing the active uh, Fairfax transportation, transportation plan update. And, and so we incorporated that map data, that public input, which was well over a thousand, a thousand requests into our process. So that's how um, that's how that um, effort got enrolled in this effort. And then the work Nicole and the stakeholder working groups are doing is constantly informing what we're doing, um, and will continue to inform us as we move forward. Thank you. 
Um, Howard asked, where is the overall chart for the projects located? That's located under the interactive map. If on the web page, it's in the, the tan gold box. And it says the um, that's the major database of projects with all the criteria. And under that is a description of terms, which will explain uh, the terms used in the, the overall chart. So that's where you can find it on the, the web page. Um, David asked, um, I've been looking through some of the plans in the area, and there are numerous road widening projects with FCDOT budgets in the 80 plus million range. This county already has tons of roads of numerous lanes and very little in the way of active transportation options. I regularly hear about how the county was built poorly years ago, but I don't see or hear much about making any real effort to correct the sins of the past. What is FCDOT doing to make active transportation a real priority instead of constant trickle of lip service? Well, I, I I think we're doing a lot. Uh, the board is certainly doing what is can what it can. As I mentioned, we haven't had this kind of general fund money uh, for our transportation projects in a long, long time, and this is specifically for active transportation projects. You know, no one's made a decision to defund some of the ongoing roadway projects and move all that money to active transportation. But I will say, I'm the chief of the capital project section, which works on all kinds of capital projects, and I spend the vast majority of my time these days working on active transportation. And and so we've got lots of projects going. We have lots of efforts going. We, uh, Lauren is our new section chief of a brand new active transportation section, so this is a um, priority area for us that we're doing a lot of um, institutional organizational changes to to help prioritize. And, and Lauren, I don't know if you want to add anything to that. Uh, I'll just add that in the past we have funded a variety of projects, but we're seeing now more and more that the projects requested for funding and that are being funded by the board are transitioning to active transportation projects. So we're still moving forward with the things that were funded sometimes a decade ago, uh, but while still now funding new projects focused more on active transportation, that's what I hear about every day from the community is I want to be able to walk and bike um, safely to my local destinations. Um, so I think we're seeing that shift happen right now. But I understand your frustration. It is slow progress. As I noted, we started with over 2,800 project requests and unknown unfunded projects to to work through, and we, we get, get them every week. We've probably gotten several hundred since we started this effort back in 2021. Okay. Um, Harold is asking about a particular project, um, Project 587, What beside, but he wants to ask the question, what besides voting for that project can we do to advocate for that? I would say if you have particular information on um, the, like that you want to add in, please put it in the comment box. That helps us um, with things we may not have picked up with the analysis we've done. Okay. Okay. Um, Dan asks, will the Eskridge Road improvement address District Avenue and Merrifield Town Center as well? We noticed the agenda mentioned Strawberry Lane. Two projects were already funded on Eskridge Road. Uh, one of them I know is District Avenue. I need to check if it's hard because you all have Maryfield Town Center and Maryfield Cinema Drive. So I get those confused. The other one was one of those two. Mike looks like Michael's frantically checking. Uh, so those were already, those were two projects on Eskridge were funded through the 25 million allocation earlier this year. So the additional projects that are remaining uh, on Eskridge that made it through the prioritization process thus far are. Um, listed. So that's why you might see missing projects. Yeah. So the funded ones were Eskridge Road at District Avenue and at Eskridge Road at Maryfield Cinema Drive. Okay. Thank you. All right. Alex asked, um, he must have missed this, but are all of these bike and ped plans suggested improvements? 
I'm trying to reconcile the map with other bike and pet initiatives. I'm in the Providence District and regularly walk and bike near Old Meadow from the newly built bridge to the McLean Metro. I've heard there was a plan to eventually extend that path all the way to the Metro, but there's a bunch of redevelopment also happening in that area too. So, like me to try to sure, I mean, the first answer is yes, they're all proposed improvements and then I'll let you take the second part. Sure, so we have a lot of different efforts that are going on at the same time and many of them informed the original 2800 list. So when we have studies or plans, um, there are, what many more than 2,800 projects that we have determined, especially from our plan. So our active Fairfax transportation plan will identify what should be along every roadway in the county. That's going to be far more projects than 2,800. But um, we do we did look to existing studies, um, sort of area plans that have been done in the last few years to pull projects to uh, include those in that original list. So. I would say uh, it ties in, but right now we've gotten that list down a lot further. So if you're, the project that you're speaking of is not on this list now, you can always mention it in the comment box that it's a concerning location to you still. Um, and you know that will help us to identify what things might have um, been deprioritized through our filtering of the list that are still important to the community. Hey, and you might give the same answer to Alexis's next, next question back to the Kings Highway. She's assuring us that both sides, uh, sidewalks need widening. They're both only four feet wide and both sides have utility poles and other obstructions. Mount Eagle Elementary on the Franconia District side and the Metro Station is on the Mount Vernon District side. The walk, bike, scoot, the walk, bike, scoot traffic is heavy on both sides. Um, in spite of the terrible and unsafe sidewalk conditions. So please put that in the comment box because that is some important information. Thank you. Thank you. And, and do remember that we can only tackle so much at this time in terms of the scope and scale of the projects. Um, okay, so Amy says she's frustrated that there's a gap between my neighborhood and the new I-66 trail. I don't understand why we have to wait so long and go to such to so much trouble in order to reach the new trail without risking our lives by walking in traffic. And her project is uh, number 587. Okay. Yeah, please put Thank that you. in the comments. And I assume you'll be supporting that project. David says, is there a design standard or guide that would be used for any of these projects? VDOT seems actively opposed to traffic calming measures as their website discourages use of things like raised crosswalks and bump outs, even though these features work in places that have far fewer road fatalities than here. In other words, are these going to be to VDOT's extremely low bar of what it considers good, or will this money go to actual good designs based on things like the Crow Manual? CRW manual. Sure, the Crow manual is a Dutch uh, cycling guide. It's in a, uh, just to elaborate for those who might not be aware, um, that's sort of considered the gold standard um, internationally. Uh, uh, so we do have several uh, resources that we uh, use. Uh, and then also what that we have to use. Um, so VDOT does have standards. They have a road design manual. Uh, in order to build some things, we have to follow that manual to that those standards. Sometimes we can get those standards wavered or we can accept things into our own county maintenance in order to avoid designing it exactly to their standards. So there are um, times where we work somewhat outside of that, but we we are building on VDOT owned and maintains, maintained roads. So we do have to um, get a VDOT permit to, for everything that we build, which means designing things to their uh, standards. We also use um, other tools that they have available. They have a uh, memo on crosswalks that we will use, but we also do look to national resources as well uh, and try to make the case when we can uh, if there are uh, differences between the VDOT resources and the national resources. So we're always trying to improve with our design standards and um, bring the best end result to the user. And this is something I work on every day reviewing plans and trying to make sure that those plans both fit within the VDOT box, but serve the, the end user as best they can. Lauren, yeah, the, the, the rules for traffic, like 
official traffic calming measures. Um, it, we are somewhat limited on where those we, we can apply those and there's a county program that, um, that has to be followed in order to put those in. But as Lauren mentioned, there's a whole host of other options for particularly for crosswalks and types of treatments we can do up to uh, flat like rectangular rapid flashing beacons, which are flashing lights, even or even up to possibly a pedestrian signal, uh, just depending on the type of roadway and what's warranted. We do have to follow VDOT standards, but we do look every time and analyze it to see uh, what the appropriate facility is according to the standards and what we can get in and what's the best possible facility that we can get in. Okay, thank you. And Sonia is mentioning that she thought Cheryl, when Cheryl mentioned the different transportation groups working um, on this, she was referring to the West Falls Church Active Transportation Study last year. Um, there were many stakeholders and work groups um, looking at that area. And so I think she was wondering, um, you know, how the results of that study were, if they were considered in this effort. Yes, the a list of projects was incorporated into that 2800 list for consideration for funding. And I believe, Michael, didn't we pull one directly from the 20 for the 25 million? Yeah, we had a couple with the last round um, okay. that were part of the recommendations. And yeah, those are ever, ever present and we are aware aware. And, um, you know, that effort won't be forgotten and won't be um, kind of lost in this process as we move forward. Okay, David asks, what if any what if any interaction do these projects have with VDOT? I get directed to VDOT, VDOT to request pedestrian improvements via their interface as well. So I've made requests there and they claim to be working on some things. Do you do some checking? Um, see, do you do some checking with VDOT? And as a separate aside, it's insane that we have to talk to two different agencies and levels of government about the same street since VDOT controls the road and crossings, but doesn't do the sidewalks. Uh, and then VDOT will uh, apparently will only do um, painted bike lanes and expects the county to pay for any protected bike facilities. So we do continue to work with VDOT on the last one, especially some of the um, kind of, I'll say newer, um, they've been around, but maybe newer to us. Um, in the county bicycle facilities. The vast majority, potentially all of these projects are in or along the VDOT right away. And so VDOT basically owns and operates, maintains almost all the roads in Fairfax County. So we do have to work with them, whether it's getting permits or um, turning over the facilities for VDOT maintenance. Uh, typically, items in the roadway, whenever we can, we'll. Um, turn them over to VDOT for maintenance since they are responsible for maintaining the roadways. Same thing with facilities along the side of a road like trails and sidewalks. However, it, that's not always true. If the trail and sidewalk is partially in the right of way or outside of the right of way, we might get the necessary land rights for VDOT to maintain it, but also the county might maintain it. We might, as Lauren kind of mentioned before, it might be a facility type we think is appropriate that doesn't meet VDOT standards that then would become county maintenance because of that. But I, you do have a point where there are some sidewalks maintained by the county, some sidewalks maintained by VDOT that can be confusing. There are some, are some online resources to help with that. Um, I guess the good news is the county and VDOT for the most part know which facilities they maintain, but it doesn't make it necessarily easy for you to find out or know intuitively which one that is. We try to avoid that as much as possible so you don't have kind of the checkerboard of maintenance along a roadway, but um, it's there today and sometimes it's unavoidable. And the same thing also can happen with, pro with improvements. Uh, VDOT gets funds directly from the federal government to do some safety improvements that they're including implementing uh, pedestrian crossings at signals, but then we they, there are additional signalized intersections or uh, that I guess there are additional signalized intersections that we may want to come in and make improvements outside of that program. So I, I definitely understand where you're coming from, um, that it is it is confusing who is doing what, and we do try to direct you all to the right people when when we're contacted. Thank you, Lauren. Um, Leah says that the end of these projects or any project, is there a timeline for the cones and signage to be picked up? 
The work done on the Gallows Road Bridge over 66 appears to be complete and the sidewalk is open, but the large cones and sidewalk close signs are still there and intruding on the sidewalk. I see people trip every day or have to walk in the road to get around. Is that a request to VDOT to come pick up their stuff or is it something that you all can coordinate? It, That's we're good at, yeah, go ahead. Lauren. Transform 66 project. Mm -hmm. So I, if you can set, you can send our DOT info in email. Do we have that up? It's DOT info at fairfaxcounty.gov. Uh, that to comment on that and we can try to figure out how to get that addressed. It's a um, contractor working on behalf of VDOT. Yeah. So we're partnering with them on that project as well. So um, we can we can try to work on that coordination. Yep. Definitely mention it's part of the 66 project and that'll help right. help them direct yeah. it to the right place. Direct it. Exactly. Yeah. I don't I don't know the details of this. It could be many reasons. It could be that those facilities have not been inspected and accepted by VDOT could be there's a crack and so the contractor is going to have to say come back and replace the section of sidewalk and curb and gutter could be the contractor just hasn't gotten around to taking it out and they should come take it out um, so there could be many reasons but uh, we won't know the answer until we we ask so if you could send that to the DO, DOT info at fairfaxcounty.gov they can get you an answer she clarifies and says that she's refer referring to the signs in front of the entrance to Dunloring Woods on Cottage Street, but okay. make sure you include that as well. So um, thank you for that. Um, Shelly says, is there a website where we can find out ourselves what VDOT is planning on an ongoing basis regarding various projects in the county? Yes, VDOT yes. does have a lot of information on their website. We also have a capital projects web map on under. So if you go to the Fairfax County webpage and go to the transportation homepage under projects and studies, you can get to. Um, we have a capital projects web map where we try to capture most of the projects going on in the county, including VDOT projects. And again, you can it's much like the interactive map we have for this survey and these proposed projects where you can um, go to an area, click on a project, get some basic information. We have a staff report we put out approximately two times a year on in the same page that um, you can pull up and uh, search for projects as well. That does include a majority of VDOT projects. That being said, VDOT does a lot of work that we aren't able to capture. So you could look at VDOT information. Also, also VDOT has a pretty good um, system to take in comments and questions and respond back so you could also contact VDOT directly to ask. And it's the northern the, the northern uh, Virginia district website so if you just type that in Google you can come and they do have a lot of information about all the projects they are doing um, and the status so it's a, it's a good Robin. resource. David says Arlington County got control of their local roads why doesn't Fairfax County do the same? I'll just say there are lots of advantages and disadvantages to that. Uh, there is a major price tag with that. Thanks. Thank you. It's, it's something that's been studied in the past. There's never been a decision for the county to take the step to take over the roads. It, you know, that that's all I can really say. It, it has been looked at. It has been studied. The decision to do that has not been made. And Allison, thank you for posting the um, the web the web the Vita web page. Um, website on the, in the chat. Thank you. Oh, yeah, thank you. Um, I think we're closing out the questions right on time. So um, I think we'll just hand it back over to you, Michael. Thank you all so much for your wonderful questions. And please go to the survey and um, and just give your feedback. And we do have that open comment box at the end of every survey. So please, and thank you very much. So Michael. Yep, thank you uh, and thank you all for attending. We really do appreciate it. If you think of a question you haven't thought of, please um, you know, feel free to reach out to us, uh, put it in the survey and please go take the survey. If you have uh, neighbors, friends who haven't heard about it, uh, please let them know. This will officially conclude the meeting. Um, thank you again. As Robin mentioned, we'll be posting um, a recording of this meeting on the project webpage in the next day or so.